cried bitterly and said I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my wife and my kids. Saints of God, I woke up from my bed. My body was like this in the air. And the only thing that was holding me is my tracking tube and my feeding tube. It was so tight, it was pulling and I said, I have died last night. I didn't make it, but I realized if I had died, then there would be no two. And all of a sudden, saints of God, this bright light just hit through that door and knocked me over. Knocked me over. The main doctor has entered the house. And in a calm voice, he said, Mars, you're going to live. Make sure you live for me this time. <laughs> and since I saw the Apostle Dino Jennings on YouTube, for the first time, when he came pointing at that screen and pointing and pointing, I said to my wife, this guy is talking to me. And then she said, what are you talking about? That's how I preach. No, he's talking to me. I realized. Now I compared the vision the presiding bishop had and the truth of God that I saw. Now I told her, this is the very thing that God was telling me in my room. He said, Mars, I'm going to get you to leave. And I'm going to give you something that you have never seen before. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I give honor to God, true living God, for his divine and perfect understanding of all things. I'm blessed to be here. I give honor to God also to our pastor, you know, Jennings, anointed of God to preach the truth of God to the world in which it has caught my attention. And God also for the holy prophets and apostles of Christ. We have to teach him unto our time. I'm so blessed to be here and also a witness and a watchman on God's behalf. And what I'm about to share is divine. And I have never come across and seen anything like that in my whole life. I come from an organization called the South Pacific District Council, which is under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World under Bishop T.A. Price in San Jose, California, and which my father is the founder of. We were commissioned into Townsville, Australia in 2010 to pastor and oversee the flock that is in Townsville and Keynes. While we were there, I was starting to lose a lot of weight rapidly until to a stage where I went right down to 60 kilos in which we went to so many doctors and they had a lot of proof say there is nothing wrong with me. But I know very well myself, there is something wrong. Until everything got to the worst state of life in which they found out that I had a grave disease. And grave disease is very rare. Never seen in the WHO in the whole world. And grave disease in a reaction of thyroid hormone. And it can cause a lot of trouble when you reach that stage. So they found out what has happened and I went for a checkup and 
to see what's happening and the doctor said to me your thyroid have reacted and you only have a little windpipe left you're going to die my brother I said well I know I'm serving a living God but I'll wait and see what God has in store for me so I went home and told my wife about the situation they diagnosed me with lymphoma cancer they had an operation on my throat then they went inside to look further because of the reaction of the thyroid they couldn't see inside but when they found out what's inside the cancer has spread right throughout the throat all white meaning I ain't gonna survive that but they said to me sir your battle from now and on was, is going to be difficult. The doctor came to me and my wife and told us, they're giving me 11 weeks to live. So I said, well, let's see what Jesus said. We prayed together. I cried, Lord, if it's your will, let it be. I submit everything unto thee. I got admitted into hospital. To go through chemotherapy and when i was in hospital they told me it's going to cost me a hundred and fifty thousand dollars for treatment so i looked to my wife we didn't have the money at the time then i have to look to jesus who's the banker i said lord i don't have any finance so i need your help but thank God the time when I was uh, admitted to hospital, they had a WHO conference in Townsville. Then my case was brought up into notice in the World Conference, in which they wanted to study this rare reaction in the throat called grave disease. So I went up to the, to the person from here at the States, big company, and I said to him, if you want to study it, you got to pay for it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I ain't giving it free. So they paid 150000 for my treatment. And I looked to the bank. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is just one of those options that I'm going to ask you for. I stayed in the hospital for one whole year, free, with the treatment. I had eight hours operation in my throat. They put in a trachea, so I couldn't talk for one whole year. The only speaking therapy I had is my blackboard and my pen. So if you want to talk to me, you talk to me, I write back to you and you read what I'm saying. You see, saints, before I carry on, I'll bring Lamentation 322. It is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed. It's because His compassion failed not. And I believe God was doing this to me because He said to me, Son, all your life you've been talking too much. Now it's time to shut you up and listen to what I have to say. saints of God there is two ways God can apply mercy to us one we can accept it willingly or one he's gonna get your attention and I think that was my option because he was putting me into a corner and he said listen up it's time to talk to you say nothing so I carried on in that came out of the operation went into uh, to see the oncology doctor he said you're going to go through a sick cycle of chemotherapy i said amen every 14 days you will get the first one the sixth the second and the third praise the lord i was ready for it but the day came when we were applying to apply the chemotherapy i was sleeping on my bed and the curtain was closed i'm not an asthmatic person 
But somehow I started to lose a lot of air and I was grasping for air. So I said, Lord, what's going on? So I pushed the alarm to alarm the nurse. To me, the nurse is coming to my room because I can see the curtain when somebody walks past. It hits the curtain until the entrance. So I waited and waited for the nurse. As soon as the curtain opened up, this air just hit me and I just went blank. It wasn't the nurse. It was my other pal. I realized when I woke up, they were resuscitating me. They said, you had an asthma attack and you almost died. And I thought to myself, my Lord, what's going on here? And the doctor said to me after my resuscitation that they found a lesion in my lungs. That means I cannot take chemotherapy. Because of the radiation, it will kill me. Because there will be no immune system. So I said to them, so what are we going to do about it, doctor? He said, the only way is we have to puncture your lungs. I said, you're going to put me under sedation? He said, no, you have to stay awake. And I said, how am I supposed to breathe if you're going to puncture my lungs? He said, Mars, this is up to you now. You've got to hold it for a few seconds. So I said, let's do this. See, I thank God for his strength. So I was watching the monitor. They brought this long needle from the side. And I can see the needle moving through my lungs. And they said, me in a few seconds, your lungs will collapse. And you got to hold it until we get the lesion that's on the side of your lungs. So I said, all right. If it's to live, yes, I'm doing it. So I prayed to God's strength. And all of a sudden, my lungs collapsed. But I felt this heaviness. Now I realize what it feels like when somebody gives up the breath of life. Yeah. They cut the needle to the lesion, tried to take it in as soon as fast as they could, pulled it out and passed it and resuscitated me back again. That's treatment number two. Third, they gave me a lumberjack. Lumberjack is to do with your spine. In a certain position, they inject a real long, thin needle into your spine. And they have to hold it and wait for 10 drops of liquid for diagnostic, make sure the cancer has not spread through the spine. After that, I came out of it. They said to me, you're going to get the worst headache of your life. 10 of us went through it. Nine passed away. I, I survived. It is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because His compassion fail not. And I continued on with the treatments and I said, Lord, they have to put me on morphine. Because the, the pain is so, so severe to go through these things. And I went through it and I said, Lord, give me strength. I continue in it. Then finally I got cleared to take chemotherapy. I started my first, my second, my third, the fourth. The doctor said, your body cannot take it and you're not going to make it mass. You're not going to make it. So they took me in the room. I spoke to my wife about it. There's a lot of contradiction that's going on. But let's see what God says. They said, your time of living is getting shorter from 11 years and being brought closer. Because the body is really handling a lot of chemicals, which I have to take 25 pills a day. And they have to take blood out of my arms, both arms. They were both black. Even got to a stage, there's no blood left. And I was battling with it so much and a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting. Until it got to the last stage, I was taken and said, into ICU, we cannot come and see you anymore, Mars, because there is something about you that when you breathe, it's going to cause a chemical reaction to people, which is TB. I said, Lord, you said cancer 
and this and that, and now TB? The doctor came to see me, my wife came to see me, but this is the catch, saints. My father called my wife, but when I pass away, we're going to bury him behind my house. My wife said, no, I'm taking him home where I come from. So they were having family arguments. The coffin was arranged. And the funeral services was arranged. Praise the Lord. The headstone wasn't planned. They came up to the hospital that night. They said, and my children, Dad, this is the last time you're going to see you. What can I say? So they left home that night. I cried unto God. I said, Lord, this is it. But I'm depending on you. And, and, and this is when I saw God. I woke up in the morning, ready to be transferred to hot spice. I thought I have died. And I, and I cried bitterly and said, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my wife and my kids. Saints of God, I woke up from my bed. My body was like this in the air. And the only thing that was holding me is my tracky tube and my feeding tube. It was so tight, it was pulling, and I said, I have died last night. I didn't make it. But I realized if I had died, then there would be no two. And all of a sudden, says of God, this bright light just hit through that door and knocked me over. Knocked me over. The main doctor has entered the house. And in a calm voice, he said, Mars, you're going to live. Make sure you live for me this time. Yeah! It is of the Lord's mercy! His compassion Fail not! Hallelujah! God's mercy! God's mercy! God's mercy! I, I put myself down with the hose that's holding me. Me and God were having a personal relationship. I went out to the floor and said, The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, at your will. After that, I went outside to see my wife. My father was there. The family was there. The doctors were there to give the last result. And my wife said to me, we come to say goodbye. And everything has been arranged and people from different islands where you're going to land are waiting. I told her, what arrangement are you talking about? The arrangement we spoke to you yesterday, the funeral service. I said, I ain't dying tonight. Not today. She said to me, Ma, stop being stubborn. The doctor told us. I said, that's what the doctor told you. But that's not what Jesus told me. It is of the Lord's mercy. His compassion failed not.
We argued. We argued. I said, not today, darling. The doctor told you the wrong information. The real doctor said, I'm going to leave. The doctor came to say, we're escorting you to the hospital. I said, no. I want you to take me to the blood oncology. Take some blood out of my hands and test it out. And he said to me, you don't have any more blood, Mars. I said, try it again. So they try it. As skinny as I am, as black as my arms were, that blood does gush through that too. And I said, yeah. And I said to them, you let me know what the blood says. And they came back a few hours later. They were talking to my father. They were talking to my wife. They all came to me and said, what happened in there? I told them, it's got nothing to do with you. It's between me and God. Mercy! The Lord's mercy! If pay or not, that is of the Lord's mercy. I ain't dying today. I went home. After a few months of mouth therapy, I had to eat. And after the doctor confirmed that I would not speak again, Everything started to repair itself according to the creator that created me. It put my immune system back. It got rid of the hormone reaction. It got rid of all sorts of stuff that God was cleaning me up for. And after that healing says, I never turned back. I went to our first conference. And we had the presiding bishop from the PAOW there. Yes, Mr. Ellis, if you have heard of him. Yes. All the pastors together gathered and they prayed over pastor because of the healing miracle. And then the presiding bishop prophesied. He said, pastor, something big is coming. I can feel it, but I can't see it. I can feel it, something about you, you are going to stir up a big thing here in the Pacific, but I can't see it. Today I got the confirmation, that's why you can't see it, because it was not made for you. And since I saw the Apostle Dino Jennings on YouTube, for the first time, when he came pointing at that screen and pointing and pointing, I said to my wife, this guy is talking to me. And then she said, what are you talking about? That's how I preach. No, he's talking to me. I realized. Now I compared the vision the presiding bishop had and the truth of God that I saw. Now I told her, this is the very thing that God was telling me in my room. He said, Mars. I'm going to get you to leave. And I'm going to give you something that you have never seen before. Yeah. Saints of God, ever since I started to apply the truth of God, there was a big stir in the South Pacific. So that was the prophecy fulfillment. Today as I stand here, I have been persecuted Big time because people are getting saved in the Pacific. From that day, I gave God, God gave me that miracle in my room. Before I close, emails have been sent to churches. No contact with Pastor Mars. Been persecuted, so be. And through our families, we have disconnected because of the truth of God. But it doesn't matter really. Because your persecution 
have no effect on me at all. See, what I went through, that persecution is nothing at all. Because God's mercy was more and he was preparing me for something that's coming. God was preparing Pastor Mars for the truth of God. He said to me, get out of that. I'm giving you this. And I'm so blessed to be here. And I'm blessed to meet you all in Jesus' name. Bless you all.